this is absolutely just amazing. You know, President Trump, there, there is something big has happened with President Trump today. Okay. Every, and I, I, I want to tell you what this is, but let me go through the steps of what's happened this week. Okay. The Trump miracle that's happened this week, right? So Monday morning is bond day and corrupt judge in Goran's, you know, half a billion dollar bond that Trump has to come up with, with corrupt Letitia James, you know, pushing that. And Monday morning began, and this is, this is insane. Monday morning began (laughs) with CNN salivating that Trump was going to have to sell Trump Force One and Mar-a-Lago and this and that. And they were... And they couldn't wait for someone to buy it and then tear it down. They were just having a great time, MSNBC, CNN, all this stuff. Trump goes in t- into the courtroom. He comes out. He gets it slashed by 60%. He's got the money basically on him. He could have paid it right there if he wanted to. And then after he had that victory and the, after that incredible press conference, he made $1 billion. That was Monday. Then uh, yesterday, Tuesday, he made a few billion dollars more when the Trump stock went public, DJT. On on the uh, you know on the on the stock exchange and Kathy and I have bought Trump stock. Mm-hmm. He made billions. My mom did too. Your mom bought it. Yeah, uh, a lot of people bought it, and uh, we're going to buy more. And Pre- President Trump made like I don't know how many. But th- there's been mixed reporting on it, but he made about six billion dollars on Tuesday. He made a billion dollars on Monday. Or, That's crazy. Uh, as much as six billion on Tuesday. And now today, Wednesday, listen to this. This, this is. I mean, the, who does that? This just broke. Listen to this. <laughs> Tr- it's only Wednesday. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Trump's media company that yes. we bought stock in. We own a piece of Trump, Kathy. We own a piece of Death. We right. own a piece of Trump. And we have the hat. The $24,000 autographed MAGA hat that's in the safe deposit box. Absolutely. Listen to this. Trump's media company is now valued at eight billion, with a B. Trump's media company is valued at eight billion dollars. And is worth more than the New York Times and Mattel. Wow. And I want to, I'll go through this article. And a lot of people say, well, it's just true social and no one uses true social. And I will tell you guys, I'm on true social. I really don't use it. Um, I, I haven't used you know, it in like a year. I, I, I maybe a few weeks ago, a month ago, I, you know, there's so many social platforms. And, yeah. um, you know, my show prep. I, I mostly use Twitter X, and I'll tell you why. Um, in the olden days, okay, I used to have to print up articles and stuff I talked about on the air. So what I do now for my stack of stuff, when I'm going through the news in the morning, every news outlet has a button to post to Twitter. Mm-hmm. So I just post, I hit the button on the article that I'm interested in, and I post it to Twitter. And when I'm on the air, and even when we're podcasting here, even when I do my live streams, you'll see this, when I do my live streams from our home studio – when you could see, I, I show the articles on the screen when I do the show from my home studio here. Um, I just post everything to Twitter because there's a button on all the news articles, and my show prep is my Twitter feed. So if you want my or X feed, if you want my show prep, all my show prep, the everything I talk about and the things I don't even get to are on my Twitter feed. Okay, and and the the news articles don't have buttons for truth. Some do. Gateway Pundit. There are some conservative news sites that have a button for truth, but only a couple. Yeah, not many. So yeah. I tried for a while to do both, and it's just too much. It's, I don't yeah. have time when I'm doing show prep in the morning because I got to go to the radio station and get on the air. But it's going to be more than just true social when this is done. I don't know what his plans are, uh, but President Trump is going to have a huge media empire. So it's worth more, Mattel's the toy company, worth more than the New York Times. And that's, well, Mattel just had that big, big movie with the Barbie movie. That really? That's billions. Mattel? Yeah, Barbie is made by Mattel. I had no idea. I don't know if they had a hand. I in, bet Mayor Pete knows who makes Barbie. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's worth more than- I, than, I had than all the, the Barbies as a little girl. So let's go through this article. But the New York Times, to be valued in just a day at more than New York Times is, is amazing. Donald Trump's New media company ended its day of active first day trading, valued at $8 billion, more than established firms like the New York Times and Mattel. Amid warnings, investors were putting their money on Trump rather than the firm itself. how long has the New York Times been around? Oh, (laughs) over a century. Trump media company is pretty new. Mm -hmm. At one point during the heat of the first day of trading on the NASDAQ, 
The firm that owns True Social was valued at $10 billion, despite having just $3 million in revenue for the first nine months of last year. Even after the stock price cooled to $57.99, the firm was worth more than firms with loads of users and established track records. The New York Times, which was established in 1851 and reported on the firm's public trading debut, which put its value as greater than Barbie maker Mattel, is valued at about $7 billion. Its share price is about 2,000 times revenue. Online message board Reddit, which had its own splashy debut days ago, has a similar market cap, but boasts 200. It goes on and on and on. Um, watchdogs are warning the Trumps, blah, blah, blah. Okay. There's nothing to worry about, okay? With the, the truth social going to this high value is not because of MAGA people buying the stock. Of course, as many of us that could bought stock. I know. Yes, you, you should know, if you can. You know, and uh, that's a good thing. But the big money investors that buy l- more stocks than any of us will ever own in our lives in one transaction, they're the ones that drove the value up. What would you and, like to see Trump do with his media company? I, well, I, I definitely want well, to let me, go. Let me, maybe Truth TV. Maybe. But the thing about it is when – um, when President um, uh, Trump's company is worth more than New York Times, more than Mattel in just a day, that means that the big money Wall Street people see him, one, winning the election, two, not going to jail, and, the co- and three, the company being successful. They would not pour money in there if they thought he wasn't going to win the election, if he was going to lose because it would tank or he was going to go to jail or be taken off the ballot. So the big money insider Wall Street types believe – that Trump's going to win, and this is better than a poll, and it's pretty exciting. And the media are really downplaying it. In fact, I, I went online this morning to get the price. This morning, it was hard to find. Uh, you know, a friend of mine, Brad, he goes on our – he went on the last cruise. He's going to be on this cruise, and he texted me today. He said, buying Trump's stock is like buying war bonds. Uh, it's very patriotic. If you believe in Trump, you should own his stock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why we own some, and it's it's really uh, it's. It, and Brian and it's I amazing. don't really own a lot. No, we of don't. Stocks. No, we like no, we don't own stocks. Like big into the stock market. We don't own stocks, and uh, yeah. now we do. And and uh, I don't want to tell anybody how many we bought, but it was it was uh, for us. It was a nice size purchase for us. And when it comes to stocks, uh, and I'm and I'm excited to own it. And and I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to buy Trump stock from time to time whenever we can or there's a yeah. there's there's a you know because this company is going to be around for a long long time and one day Baron Trump will be running it you know and uh this company is going to be something what it's going to be I don't know but what was Twitter and Facebook when it started right you know what I, you know what I mean and uh and and remember how big MySpace used to be and then it got knocked out by Facebook and then, you know, and then Twitter. And when Twitter came along, people were like, well, what's this going to be? Uh, you know, and look what it is. And and the American people have confidence in Trump. They have confidence in Trump. The big money people have confidence in Trump. And this incredible, you know, it's it's the, the media. Are, we don't have a media in this country. The mainstream media is the deep state. We all know this. And the economic success of Trump's company and just and by the way this is just one of his companies that he's made billions of dollars off of in the last two less than three days imagine uh, he's got a bunch of other businesses all over the planet um, this economic success is a great endorsement and testament to why he should be the president of the United States because he knows how to how he, he, he on Monday they were about to take every penny of cash he had mm-hmm. liquid in the bank yep. he he Got that cut down by sixty percent, and he's made like six or seven billion yeah, this dollars. Yeah, like since. pocket change for this guy. Since you I'd know? like to see Truth TV, I'd like to see uh, him do you know do something other than Truth Social. If this is a big media company, and my mom bought some of the stock, and she's like, she doesn't really know too much about you know this company or all that, and she says, well, mm-hmm. you know, what does he do and this and that, and I explained to her. I said, well, he has Truth Social. It's like Twitter, but I said I'm pretty sure they're going to expand. <laughs> And mm-hmm. do other things. I'm hoping, but I want to. I want to say about the, the the. I want to talk about the Ron McDaniel. Oh, before thing we, before we get quick. to that, I'll, I'm gonna make. I'll make a prediction. Yeah. That he. I I bet you, uh, Rumble merges with it. I bet they take over Rumble. Oh, okay. You think? I, I'm guessing. You know, Don Jr. does a show there. You know, mm-hmm. and he. You know, his triggered show, and 
Yeah, I, I, that would be my guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, you know, this thing with Ron and McDaniel. They're going to start acquiring With stuff. MSNBC. This is this is unbelievable because, you know, MAGA people, none of us like Ron and McDaniel. I mean, she's on the, the – there's two – yesterday I said there's one Republican disliked more than her, but I was wrong. There's two. The, the most disliked Republican is Mike Pence. Followed by uh, the second most disliked Republican is Liz Cheney, and then it's mm, Ron and McDaniel. Yeah. And Ron and McDaniel, who's Mitt Romney's niece, um, she's a never Trumper. She was undermining Trump. Uh, she wanted to lose uh, elections so that Trump and MAGA would fade away, and the establishment would still be in control. We don't like her, and I think most people in political circles know MAGA does not like her. And this thing that happened. At MSNBC, I, this this was shocking to me, Kathy. The guy that runs NBC actually sent out a memo apologizing to the staff for hiring her. Well, here's the thing. Howie Kurtz came out, and I'll play this. Uh, he's, <clears throat> he, uh, this is why I think they don't like her, because no. they have a different opinion. Um, um, well, I don't like her. I mean, I, you know. Hold on, okay. And, and this, is, this is what's bizarre, because... Don't you think, Kathy, that like Rachel Maddow and all these people at MSNBC, no MAGA people don't like her? No. no they think they we see, like her? They see her as helping him and as his friend, and it doesn't mm. fit their narrative uh, that they're trying to push about Trump um, if they bring her in. Um, it, it, it's, it's in their mind, <clears throat> they're like, they see Trump, obviously, the, in a way we don't. And they see her as one of his allies. They don't realize. The, the oh, way, she's not. She's an do. enemy. Well, that's not what they see. They see that she's one of his allies. Well, they don't understand they it. They have people on there that have worked for Trump that, that you know, she was being paid $300,000 a year. And she right? had a two-year deal. So how many times, how much work is that? You might be on once, twice a week. You might be Maybe. a little more active during the election cycle mm -hmm. if you're a contributor. But their contributors contributors start at three hundred thousand a year. So you're going to say just about anything the network wants you to say. That's a hell of a lot of money. Okay, I mean over two years, that's six hundred thousand dollars. You're going to say anything mm -hmm. they want. This is why these people on TV, on The View, and on Fox. This is why they tow the corporate line because yeah. they, they're making so much money, but they obviously don't see her as, as like these other never Trumpers that they can use. And I think that their perception of her and his, and her relationship with Trump, having her on the network, it's almost like they're in, they're in line with Trump. Like they're agreeing with Trump, having her on that network. I think that's why it flipped them out so much because they think She's really tight with him and having her on um, really flipped them out. And it was like, well, we can't have her on because this is going to look like we're supporting this guy and yeah. she's all in with him and she's going to push these lies. And we can't, you know, so the problem is the president of the network should have told them all to go screw themselves. Yeah. But I think what happened is they all the personalities went on air complaining. I've never seen anything like it. I think they threatened to walk out. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that they went to the guy's office in a group, got Rachel Maddow, who has a lot of pull there, Joy Reid, Alex Wang, whatever, all these people, uh, the chick on Meet the Press. NBC is a huge media company. Yeah. And I think they all went to the president's office together or sent a mass memo that they all signed and said, if you don't fire her, we're all going to walk That's out crazy. and have a strike. I could see that happening. Well, you the know, I caved way too fast. You know, the, she's suing them, though, that the fact that Rachel Maddow. Who's like the leader, the, the leader of the. Uh, Idi liberal idiots. I was going to say the the dipshits, but the king of the dipshits. You know, yeah, it's like, from but 16 candles, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, she looks. She, she, yeah, she's got the same hair, you know, but <laughs> as Anthony, Michael. but I don't want to use profanity, but she's considered to be like this brilliant political mind for them, for her and the rest to think that she's in with Trump and speaks for MAGA shows. They don't know what the hell's going on. No, they don't because that's really, hate her, I think like, where their like anger was Cheney. coming from. But, and, and it also shows how immature they are. They're employees. Yeah. And for them to go on the air and attack, when Chuck, they were having a tantrum. I misread this one. Okay. When Chuck, Chuck Todd, when on the show that they fired him from as a guest, which they do every week to humiliate him, 
And he said the bosses have an apology to make. I thought he was trying to get fired like Candace Owens to get out of his contract. But then he that was the beginning of a charge. It was started by him. There was and then, more, it, and then the rest picked up on it. There was more outrage mm. over, which this is shocking to me. But they, they obviously have a different perception of Ronda McDaniel. Of, and but, reality. Their their reaction to her was worse than Megyn Kelly. But at the Today Show. And I thought uh, Megyn yeah. Kelly was a bad hire for them. And I was shocked that she lasted as long mm. as she did. But when they hired her, I thought they cannot be, they, they were it's not insane. happy. Remember Tamron Hall quit? <laughs> yes. And she has yes. her own talk show now. But there, other than her leaving, nobody left over Megyn Kelly. Mm. Nobody complained or anything like that. And she was a very high profile person. Much more than Ron, and she had a yeah. twenty million dollar deal. Ronda McDaniel is like a nobody, and I mean, we hate. she ran the RNC, but Trump she doesn't was, like her either. But she doesn't run the RNC anymore. In fact, Trump fired her. They have Michael Steele on there all the time. He used to run the RNC, exactly. So, w- what is it about her? It has to be, in my opinion, that they think she's like still in with Trump. That's insane. And like, like a spy. He just fired her. That's. I'm telling you, this is liberal land. Yeah. They think he is, she is still in with him They're and stupid. that, and that she's like a spy. Well, and they, they got really scared that you she know, was there for these, um, MS the action was over the top for these MSNBC ears to go yeah. on their own air and attack their bosses about a hire is insane and inappropriate. And they think that they, they look good. They look like immature children and they have so damaged the brand. Of they have. If Tim, the reaction from people is that they're not tolerant. If Tim Russert were alive, this crap wouldn't have no. happened. The reaction from people that I've seen on Twitter and TikTok and things is that they're not tolerant, that they really are going after Trump unfairly, that they won't even let somebody from his side have a position at the table. You know I what mean, I mean? Nicole Wallace is a Republican who worked for McCain. You yeah, know, but they're, they're, what they, what they're, they're, they, they're not going to hire anybody that is going to defend Trump at all. And that's clearly how they saw her as somebody who was going to come on and try to make, make him look good. And they're so biased in their coverage. People are saying that they won't even allow somebody with a different opinion that's even slightly pro-Trump. Yeah. And it really makes – shows their bias and a lot of people, but their brand is so damaged already. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. Now, uh, we got to take a break. Then don't miss the next segment, guys. There was just this, a, a bizarre mm. event with Ben Shapiro and you won't want to miss it. I mean, it, it, Ben Shapiro did something very strange, very odd I have the audio, and we're going to play it right after this. Are you a seasoned, successful entrepreneur or an aspiring business owner? Unlock the secrets of success and self-discovery in the business memoir from author Stephen M. Strum, Success and Self-Discovery, available on Amazon. When you read Success and Self-Discovery, author Stephen M. Strum will take you on his journey through his 46 years of entrepreneurial experience, from his humble beginnings in the military to building a successful million-dollar business. Success and Self-Discovery is filled with practical advice and personal anecdotes. This book is filled with wisdom for aspiring and seasoned entrepreneurs just like you. If you're tired of feeling stuck in your career or you're struggling to make progress with your business ideas, success and self-discovery is your roadmap for success. You'll learn how the author overcame challenges, achieved personal fulfillment, and built a thriving, successful business from the ground up. Readers agree that success and self-discovery is filled with practical lessons and wisdom, and this book will inspire you to become a successful entrepreneur. You'll learn how to avoid the pitfalls and painful mistakes that author Stephen M. Strum encountered on his road to success. Are you ready to change your life and discover your path to success? Then order your copy of Success and Self-Discovery from author Stephen M. Strum on Amazon, available in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. 
From author Stuart D. Young comes a book that's a journey through life's twists and turns. Simon's Run and Other Adventures, available on Amazon. In Simon's Run and Other Adventures, meet Simon Zane. He's an ordinary guy caught up in extraordinary escapades as he navigates through the highs and the lows of life. From defending his country to spying for love, Simon's adventures span across the United States and beyond, offering readers a captivating glimpse into his world. Each story presents a new challenge, a new choice, and a new consequence. It will leave you on the edge of your seat, wondering what adventure Simon will embark on next. The author's own life is woven into the narrative. Simon's run and other adventures is a character study of resilience and survival, reminding us that our choices shape our destiny. Will Simon's choices land him in the slammer? Or will his desire to do the right thing and then have a snack win out? Find out when you read Simon's Run and other adventures from author Stuart D. Young. Available on Amazon and Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. Order your copy right now and join Simon on his next adventure. Simon's Run and other adventures from author Stuart D. Young on Amazon. Are you in need of a little encouragement? Are you searching for a spark of intrigue? Could you use a good laugh? Then check out Genesis-Revelation.life. Genesis-Revelation.life is your go-to destination for unique and heartfelt designs that resonate with your spirit. Picture this. Thousands of meticulously crafted items, each one with a personal touch. From the whimsical to the profound, the designs at Genesis-Revelation.life cover a wide spectrum, ensuring there's something for everyone. Whether you're drawn to the warmth of Scripture, or prefer non-scripture items, they've got you covered. T-shirts, leggings, totes, headbands, crossbody bags, blankets, journals, napkins, aprons, coasters, drinkware, and that's just the beginning. But what sets Genesis-Revelation.life apart from the rest is simple. A sprinkle of humor, a dash of intrigue, and a layer of comfort. Each design tells a story, seeking to connect with you on a deeper level. In a world that often feels impersonal, Genesis-Revelation.life stands out as a place where every item is designed with with heart and soul. Tell your story with these unique designs. Shop now and let your spirit shine. And make sure to share the store on all your social media so your friends can discover Genesis-Revelation.life too. Genesis-Revelation.life where every design is a connection waiting to happen. Start shopping right now. Genesis-Revelation.life You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at BrianCraigShow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Well, Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire have just been getting in all kinds of trouble day after day. And a third thing has happened with this very strange, out-of-character interview that Ben Shapiro did. Now, of course, this started with them firing Candace Owens. And make no mistake about it, Candace Owens was fired because of her position on Israel and Hamas and Gaza. There's no mistaking that, okay? Let's, I mean, come on. Let's let's not dance around that. Now, I, I don't like Ben Shapiro. I don't think he's good on the air. I think he talks too fast. He talks as fast as an auctioneer. He's very annoying. He's a never-Trumper. I don't like this guy. I don't support his positions. However, I do agree with him on Israel, okay? Um, but he, they fired Candace Owens, and to act as if Ben Shapiro has nothing to do with this firing of, of Candace Owens, and that she wasn't fired because of her position on Israel is, is just dishonest. So that was problem number one. Then, uh, day before yesterday, Jeremy Boring, who's the guy that runs the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's partner, did this Twitter spaces hosted by Lauren Chen. And um, he ended up having a conversation on the Twitter. I guess it's X spaces now with um, that Nick Fuentes Mm. white supremacist, but he's Hispanic and he hangs out with Kanye. That that whole thing with him is just, he's just a troll. I mean, he just likes publicity. He doesn't care. People think he's a Nazi. So Jeremy Boring gets in this bizarre confrontation and conversation with Nick Fuentes and, and says that it's okay for Ben Shapiro to interview him and they really shouldn't be elevating a Nazi to that level. And then Ben Shapiro did an interview with Pierce Morgan. You got two buttes here, Pierce Morgan and Ben Shapiro. And 
the only thing to talk to Ben Shapiro about right now is Candace Owens. I mean, what what else would you if you were talking to Ben Shapiro in an interview other than Candace Owens? What would you talk to him about? And there's nothing else he has to say that's no. interesting. You want to know about Candace Owens and what's going on? So um, Pierce Morgan, who, by the way, was the Celebrity Apprentice one season. Yeah, he won it the first season. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the first Celebrity he Apprentice. Was the first Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah, yeah, and, and picked by Donald Trump, the greatest president ever. So let me just play this. We'll talk about it. So this is uh, Pierce Morgan with Ben Shapiro. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the center of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. Okay. Oh, my gosh. And it gets worse. His voice, isn't it annoying? Yeah. It's, it's really annoying. It seems annoying. even more nasally than usual. You know what I wonder? I wonder if he overdoes that nasally thing because it's kind of like his trademark voice, he thinks. No. I, I You know, I just think he has like- A nasally voice. A nasal problem. Mm-hmm. He needs to see an D- ENT maybe. septum or something. Um, now- Yeah, it's getting worse. Why he would be doing interviews- not willing to talk about the only thing about him that's newsworthy or interesting right now, which is Candace Owens, is beyond me. So listen, it goes on. He's like offended. Uh, at all. At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. Can, can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not. You can ask why you don't want to say anything. <laughs> what a jerk. Um, again, you can ask. You can ask. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them. However, I mean, su- suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position. That is, he's, such he's a liar. BS. He may not have an official position to do that, but he's got influence. I mean, he he founded the thing with Jeremy Boring. After she came out uh, disagreeing with him on Israel, that's what sealed her fate. I told you she was and, done there uh, when that happened. Yeah, and and he the wheels went in motion. And I don't. And, and I I agree with you. I think she did that on purpose. She wanted out of that contract. Well, he might not want to answer to it, but let me tell you what's going to happen. She is going to talk about it at length. Oh yeah, in the right time. And then he is going to have to, she is going to troll him. Remember we talked about who mm-hmm. she's going to troll first? She's going to troll him first because he's refusing to validate her right here. He doesn't want to talk about her because he doesn't want to validate her or her existence. And he's above it. And, so she yeah. is going to be the one who is going to do an interview with Piers Morgan. And oh, she yeah. will call him up and say, I'll tell you, I'll spill all the tea. Yeah. And I'll tell you everything. And then Shapiro's going to have to respond to yeah. her. He can, and she's not going to let him ignore I, her. I don't appreciate this lying that he has no role in things like big decisions at the Daily Wire. No, I don't give, believe give that a, at all. Give me a break. To Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts, I am not in hiring and firing position with the Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of the Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of the Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Jeremy Boring. And- he's, a, he's a co-owner, but he's not in management. That is such nonsense. Yeah, give me a break. Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. I've never called for Candace or anyone else, for that matter, to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, I'm just not going to labour this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because her comments had been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm, I'm not going to comment on this, Piers. What now, a now, what he said there at the end, though, before that, when he said that uh, no, one, no, no publisher is obligated to pay someone in publish. That's a confirmation that they fired her, and they fired her over the Israel position. And I think they I, – I listen, we were talking about this on um, the uh, podcast all, over the weekend, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You guys can listen to that one with mm-hmm. Candace Owens. But I, I'll say this because um, 
a lot of people are upset. Well, it's her opinion on Israel. And what I was explaining to you guys is, you know, Hamas, which is Iran, and we pay and we back Iran financially. So it's really like the United States, right? The United States backs Iran, Iran backs Hamas and these other terrorist groups. What, what Iran and these terrorist groups are trying to do is finish the Holocaust against the Jews. You guys understand that. They don't, they don't want to have some peace agreement and divisions of land with the Jews. They want the Jews gone. They're not the modern-day Nazis. And, um, we, and, and Kathy and I, we were talking on, on the podcast over the weekend that um, would you, those of you that are Christian, if you had, some, if you had a, a, a platform like you know, the Daily Wire, and you were paying someone probably seven figures a year. I would imagine she was making high six, low seven figures a year with everything she was doing, endorsement, salary, et cetera. Um, and they were denying Christ. Mm-hmm. They were denying Jesus. Would you allow that? And you probably I, – I don't think I would because I think if I did – But I'd be honest about it. I yeah. wouldn't be if like I him. Did. I would say, look, I'm a Christian. This is a Christian company. Yeah. Or whatever, I'm not going to have pay somebody who's going to be blasphemous. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, because I, I wouldn't be afraid to say if, that. If if I were allowing someone to do that, it was be it would be as if I was denying Jesus, and that that I could do. And Ben Shapiro, as much as I despise this guy, and I don't agree, and he's a never Trumper. I got to say, I do not. I'm not defending Ben Shapiro, but I do happen to agree with him on Israel. And uh, even though I know some of you don't, but uh, you know and. When from Ben Shapiro's viewpoint, and uh, the, which is what I agree with, is that Iran and Hamas and these other groups are trying to complete the Holocaust, and to have somebody there um, against us supporting Israel against these these Nazis, I don't think it's. A, I think he should be proud that he did that and should admit it, and Jeremy Boring should admit it. Um, okay, and, here's a little bit from Kennedy on yeah. the Daily Mail about Candace Owens, yeah, and. Uh, why she said she got fired. Let me see here. Yeah, well, you just handed this. Oh, this is in the Daily Mail. Kennedy. Okay. Yeah, Kennedy is now a columnist for the Daily right. Mail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, master clickbaiter uh, and anti-Semite Candace Owens. Now, I, I just want to stop there. I don't think Candace Owens is anti-Semitic. I, 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 she's definitely not pro-Israel. I think she's, I mean, come on. I think she's not informed. I think she's misinformed on the issue and doesn't have um, – an intelligent understanding of the a lot situation. of young people her age think like her. Yeah, she say that they she's, say they, they, they she they doesn't don't understand. understand. See, no, they don't. you know, Candace Owens and and other and listen. There's some other uh, conservative voices. Mark Dice uh, agrees with Candace Owens on on Israel, uh, and oh, he's he's a smart guy. Wow. Um, but there's this equivalency that's made between Israel, United States supporting Israel, and the United States support of Ukraine. There's no right. no equivalent. Maybe she is anti-Semitic. I'm not so quick to label somebody that. I, from listening to her speak, she's just not informed on the issue. Remember when, for example, when she was talking about how she visited Israel and they were, and, and she thought Muslims were mm-hmm. ethnically segregated in Israel and only allowed to live in certain areas and all this stuff. She's just stupid on the on the issue. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, anyway, the, uh, Master Click Bader and anti semite Candace Owens. This is Kennedy uh, uh, wagged her career on a set of. Totally unfounded conspiracies about France's first lady. Yeah, I've seen her do this, and and this is keep reading um, it. It's this, interesting. This um, online conspiracy yeah. that Macron's wife is is a man. I, I've heard this before, and I, I did hear her talking about it. She's saying that's why she got fired. Yeah, it appears Owens has lost the bet. Um, the greedy attention shrew has been summarily summarily discharged as Daily Wire's most desperate bomb thrower. After boss, boss is finally tired of her rabid ravings. To Owens, being an establishment elitist is a fate worse than death, though some would argue unemployment and nosedive to irrelevancy might sting a little worse. I don't think Kennedy likes Candace. No. Kennedy, to me, is a bit of, she has the worst hair I've ever seen, but she's a bit of a snob. Yeah. She's been, you know, I don't know anything about her life or anything. I remember she was on MTV. She was on MTV. She had, she was, she's not attractive. And she, when she was on MTV, I remember thinking that, why did they hire this ugly girl? She's obviously connected through somehow her family. So who knows who her family is, but I think she's probably very well educated, went to private schools. And this is what I'm guessing. I could be wrong. Comes from a family with a lot of money 
And I think she's always been in the in crowd as far as that goes. And I think she's a bit of a snob. And I, I from her tone of talking about Candace, I don't know if she's just trying to be cute and cheeky, but she's using a lot of different adjectives here in this one tiny little <laughs> paragraph. And it's like a bit over the top. And it seems very personal. And like she really did not like this woman for whatever reason. And she is saying that Candace was fired because she fed into this conspiracy. And yeah. she says a quote by Candace that the Macron prime minister's, his wife was a man. This was a conspiracy floating around a couple of weeks ago. People, I don't, you know, whatever. I really don't care. The thing that's more disturbing is she would start dating him when she, when he was 15 and she was like 40 and she was his teacher. I mean that, you know, but it's France. They're perverts over there. I've been there and trust me, that's how they are. And, but this is the new conspiracy that she's a man, whatever. So she's saying that is why Candace was fired. No, I disagree. I, I think maybe that's no. what they've told these, people. Yeah. But I think as soon as yeah. she spoke out against uh, Israel, I think that sealed her fate and they were just waiting well, for the right time. The thing with Kennedy, cause I, I know a little, cause I, I remember her on uh, MTV. She's not from what I know connected. She's from Oregon or something. Okay. Well, then I don't um, know how she got on the, and I got in, she's uh, all in, was in with was, Riley um, and everything. She was in radio and that's how she got on MTV somehow. And back, oh, back okay. in those days, MTV was connected to radio. That's how I got that audition for the real world. Right. Okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. That, the one well, I then why get. is she so snooty? She just comes across uh, well, she's as so been, snooty. She's been a, a, a New York media person since the MTV days. So that brings snootiness. And I remember on MTV, Kennedy, you know what her big thing was? What her big thing that, that she was a, a virgin. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, I, I, know, mean, I, remember, I used to watch her in college. I know her and Brooke Shields. I she know. She said it every every. Oh my goodness. Well, you know Rebel Wilson. Yeah, that actress. I like her. She's lost like a hundred pounds or something. She's in all the um, those singing movies my, that Emily loves. Pitch Perfect. She's very funny. She's Australian. She's a lawyer. She just wrote a book, and um, she said she didn't lose her virginity till she was thirty five. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, and I've I that's rare. And then she said that Sasha Baron Cohen, who I think is a complete a hole, is a pig. Uh, the th I can't even repeat what she said happened with him on when they did no, a movie please together. Don't. Please don't. He's he's totally gross. Uh, but anyway, that's just since well, we're speaking about virgins here, this, I just thought this, I'd throw that out there. This thing if anybody's with, interested. This thing with Candace Owens, because I, yeah. I, I, this thing about Macron's wife, I heard her talking about that, and it just seems stupid to me. I thought that was just trolling. She was trying to get in some trends. She's not attractive. Uh, you know, J uh, Joan Rivers said the same thing about Michelle Obama. I mean, you well, know. Well, look what happened to Michelle, <laughs> what, what yeah. happened to Joan Rivers. But but the thing with Candace Owens. That's crazy. Candace Owens is not as smart as I think a lot of people believe she is. She's, she's just a good troll. She, you know, Candace Owens is, um, she's charismatic. She's well-spoken. She's articulate, but she's not really that smart. And, what she's and, saying in this article, Kennedy, is basically that Candace Owens is beneath the Daily Wire and that her trolling, they didn't like it and that, that, and that they, they felt it was beneath their brand. Nah, that, that may be true, but I, she's a bit of a diva. They, she wanted out, they wanted out, but they, they, they fired her and they fired her over this Israel stuff. I mean, make this, make no mistake about it. And she was, and I think she was trying to get fired and she knew that that was uh, a sensitive issue. And that could result in her getting out of that contract that she wanted out of. And you know, when she comes back, uh, she said she's going to take a couple weeks off. She could come back big with like a big Trump interview or something. She could end up on Tucker telling the whole story. Oh, I think she'll end up being she's, interviewed by Tucker she's, or Piers. She's very famous. She's got a lot of insider knowledge. I, you know, and Trump may forgive her for the trashing she did of him last year, but it was pretty brutal what she said in, ab about President Trump last year. It and, depends um, on Charlie Kirk. Yeah. Charlie Kirk has had a relationship with her for a long time since Periscope days. I don't know if they're still friendly, but it will be up to Charlie Kirk, in my opinion, whether Trump brings her back in or not. Yeah. He's going to tell Trump no or yes. And I think Trump will respect his judgment and go with it. Like with other things I won't say now, but that, that certain people that are close to Trump have told him yes or no on who to bring. Mm -hmm. I think he's much more careful who he brings into his inner circle now yeah. than he was before. And I think he'll go with Charlie Kirk. They're obviously very tight. He's helping him a lot um, with the youth. 
uh, Scott Pressler, all these people that started on Periscope with Candace. I think he's going to go by what they say and say, what do you think? Do you think we should bring her in? Or not? Well, the and problem, what do you think Charlie Kirk would say? He might say she's a troll. I don't she's know bad news. because I have had a, and I, I could be wrong about this, guys, but I've had a sense that her and Charlie Kirk had a falling out. Okay, well, probably, and, and she makes it all about her. And the That's thing, the, problem. the thing with Candace Owens, and I, if Trump brings her in, if anyone Trump brings in his circle, I'm going to support anything Trump does. Yeah, but I, she can't be trusted. She can't be trusted because she's always going to pull something stupid like uh, Macron's wife being a man or, right. or something. And, and this, and this anti-Israel position she has with Gaza, that does not fit in with Trump and his agenda and what he says. I think he would ask them or ask himself, what would she bring to the table? And I really don't think Trump needs like a black liaison like he didn't thought he needed before. You know what I mean? He's already no. got the blacks coming in and voting for him. In droves. I don't think he needs a bridge or a person like yeah. Omarosa to help facilitate that anymore like he did the first time he ran. I don't think he needs that. So I don't think he's going to bring her in because she likes to troll people. She makes it everything about her. And she. I, and I think he's going to say she doesn't bring any value. I don't need her. And I think that's where Trump's coming from mm -hmm. is what value is this person going to bring to the campaign? Do I need them? Or do I not need them? And and I don't think he needs her. So now I, I want to say there's there's been something that has been trending on social media today, and I just saw it on TV. I saw this this morning. Uh, this new TikTok thing of girls in New York talking about getting hit in the face. I'm not sure that's all real. I'm not saying that no girls are getting hit in the face. I was just thinking the same. But thing. I think this uh, these these girls on tic TikTok. A lot of them are just saying they got hit in the face. You think so? Yeah, You're I think making it's, it up. I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying no that it, no, all of them are, but it's a trendy thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there is a lot more to talk about. We have only just begun. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. From award-winning and internationally published author, Lucia Catherine, comes a story of grief and resilience when the rain came. And when the rain came, after witnessing the brutal murder of her parents, a traumatized teenager is forced to deal with the shadows of her past and embarks on a quest for closure. She uncovers dark secrets that challenge her understanding of who she really is. Join her journey of self-discovery and justice as she unravels dark secrets and confronts unspeakable tragedy and experience the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable loss when the rain came. From author Lucia Catherine is available on Amazon and the author's website, luciacatherine.com. Order your copy right now. From 12-year-old author Nathan A. Lorenzo comes a children's book the entire family will enjoy together, Fox the Brave, available on Amazon and foxthebrave.com. When your little ones read Fox the Brave, they'll join Alex the Fox on a brave adventure as he faces his fears and sets out on a daring mission to save his family from a pack of hungry wolves. Fox the Brave is filled with vibrant illustrations and is perfect at bedtime. It's also a great addition for you teachers for your class classroom reading collection. Fox the Brave is a journey of bravery, friendship, and teaches children about overcoming their fears. With simple rhyming sentences and valuable life lessons, Fox the Brave is the perfect book for young readers and parents. So grab your favorite blanket, cuddle up, and create lasting memories with your kids by bonding with them through story time. Fox the Brave, from author Nathan A. Lorenzo, is available right now on Amazon, in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited, as well as the website Fox thebrave.com. Order your copy right now. Are you searching for that perfect piece to add character and charm to your home? You can turn your living space into an art gallery with Northshire Wall Decor on Etsy.com. Northshire Wall Decor is your go-to destination for beautiful, unique wall art. Whether you're looking to spruce up your living room, bedroom, or office space, Northshire Wall Decor has something for everyone. From captivating metal wall sculptures to elegant geometric designs, their collection offers a variety of styles to suit every taste and every decor. Each 
Each piece is carefully crafted with precision and attention to detail, ensuring that you receive nothing but the highest quality art for your space. Whether you're a nature enthusiast, a minimalist, or a lover of modern art, Northshire Wall Decor has something that speaks to you. And make sure to check out their amazing collection of wood-burning stoves with oven. These are unique and will be a conversation piece in your home. They also have epoxy tables and coffee tables. Elevate your decor right now with a stunning piece from Northshire Wall Decor. In business for over seven years. Visit their Etsy shop right now. Etsy.com slash shop slash Northshire Wall Decor. Etsy.com slash shop slash Northshire Wall Decor. Explore their full collection and find the perfect piece to transform your space. You'll also find great gifts too. Etsy.com slash shop slash Northshire Wall Decor. Are you tired of bland meals? Say goodbye to those tasteless, boring dinners and hello to flavor with Right on Time All-Purpose Seasoning. Right on Time Seasoning is made with a blend of savory dried herbs and spices. This seasoning is perfect for chicken, steak, seafood, vegetables, and more. Right on Time was born in 2019 out of a passion for flavor and convenience. This seasoning is not only delicious, but it's also low in sodium with no added sugar and zero calories. Right on Time will add a burst of flavor to each and every dish. Whether you're cooking for yourself or your family, Right on Time Seasoning will make your taste buds dance with delight. Available at Walmart.com and RightOnTime.com. That's R-I-T-E on T-H-Y-M-E. Also, follow them on TikTok and Facebook at Right.On.Time. There you'll find recipe ideas, cooking tips, and more. Right on Time Seasoning. Flavor you can see and smell at Walmart.com and RightOnTime.com. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at BrianCraigShow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. I just checked my email during the break, and Mike Lindell had his assistant send me a new message about my pillow and, and the special. Now, it involves the $25 extravaganza that I've mentioned. Listen to this. Um, you know, my pillow, the, the hit that they've taken by losing out to all these uh, big box stores like um, Kohl's mm-hmm. and Walmart, and they used to be on QVC, the shopping channels. Oh, They're yeah. gone. I mean, it, and it's- He it's, would be on QVC because I watch QVC a lot. Yeah. He would be on QVC for like a weekend. Yeah. They would have the entire- with David, who's their top guy, David Venable, they would have the yeah. entire set all set up with my pillow products. I, I remember mean, the bed, everything. It was a big to do. Yeah, and a big I mean, to do, a whole weekend thing. Mike Lindell and my pillow are obviously victims, big time, of the cancel culture. But all of those things cost a lot of money. Being in those big stores, you know, they pay for the shelf space and, and things. Uh, being on. Uh, QVC, that all cost money. And they're actually- what do you mean they pay for the shelf space? Oh, yeah. Co- big companies like that, you, you, um, I didn't make, know that. you, you make deals to get a better premium shelf space for your products, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We, mm-hmm. We'd go to Bed Bath & Beyond and they would be all right in the front. Yeah, that's so, right. You know, yeah. So that money that they're saving from not having to do- you know, these huge ad buys on QVC right. or pay Walmart for shelf space, they're able to offer massive discounts. And that's why you see uh, uh, these huge discounts. And they pass that savings on to you. And that's where the $25 extravaganza comes in. And, you know, Mike Liddell, he, he, in this um, new copy they sent me, it, it, I never thought about it this way it, until they put it this way. They said, when Mike started my pillow. Mm. It was a problem, solution, one product company, right? Not getting a good night's sleep. Right. The solution is the MyPillow. And uh, since then, well, they've got, I don't know. There's over 200 MyPillow products uh, at MyPillow.com. I don't know the exact number offhand, but there's over 200 of them. And right now, the $25 extravaganza is going on. The two-pack multi-use MyPillow, just $25. MyPillow sandals, just 25 bucks. The six-piece towel sets that we have, 25 bucks a set. Uh, they have dish towels, 25 bucks for the dish towel set. Have they ever um, done this before? Not, 20, no. Not, yeah, not this, this. I was going to say, that's amazing. The premium my pillows, the Giza my pillows. Here's, here's one right here that we have, 25 bucks. 
That and, is a great deal. We paid a lot more. Yeah, and the, we got them when they first came out. And the $25 extravaganza you'll see right there at MyPillow.com. You can take advantage of that with our promo code Kane, of course, K-A-N-E. And it's free shipping off your entire order, too. So it's free shipping off your entire order. And there's other top my pillow products that are in the twenty five dollar extravaganza, like the pet beds are in there too. By the way, uh, that's these are just a few of them. So go to mypillow.com, use our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, and take advantage of the twenty five dollar extravaganza and free shipping on your entire order as well. That's a great deal. Okay, now for some reason, Comedy Central brought this liberal jerk John Stewart back to the failing Daily Show, and. Why he left, I don't know. It was during that Me Too thing. He was making $20 million a year. I haven't heard anyone say what he makes now. I don't think it's $20 million. And he briefly did this attempt of a comedy show on the news on Apple TV. I watched, well, I tried to watch one episode. He's it was so, so bad. Funny. It was so bad. And, you know, he came from MTV as well, if you guys remember, just like Kennedy. He was, I remember seeing him at the MTV Beach House. And mm-hmm. it's hard to believe he came up through MTV, Jon Stewart. And here he is. And when he was on The Daily Show, as crazy as this sounds, this liberal jerk, Jon Stewart, when he was on The Daily Show, The Daily Show was the liberal Democrat political show of record. It used to be Meet the Press with Tim Russer. Tim Russert was gone. It was The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. In fact, I think that's where um, uh, the guy from The Office that I love, Steve Carell. Steve Carell was he on the was Daily Show. He was a correspondent, show. and his wife, oh. who's also very oh. funny, yeah. was a correspondent on that show when it first started. Yeah, and Two. he's uh, and John Stewart is uh, a vicious liberal. Now, I did watch his. Uh, it was either his first or second episode back on The Daily Show, and he, he's a liberal jerk, but he is he he is funny on there. I will say he does have like top comedy writers. When he was with the Apple Show, he must have been doing his own writing because it was not funny. Mm-hmm. But I'm yeah, sure. But he's been attacking Trump over overvaluing his property, and uh, which of course is nonsense and. There's been some investigations done. There's an article in the New York Post today that John Stewart, who's been attacking President Trump for overvaluing his properties, which Trump didn't do, uh, that according to the New York Post, John Stewart overvalued his home in New York City by 829%. Wow. Listen to this. This is, uh, this is the New York Post today. John Stewart is facing online backlash after the comedian opined on the air this week that Donald Trump's civil real estate case for overvaluing his property was not victimless when it turns out the price of a previous home sale finds John Stewart doing that, just that. On Monday night, Stewart, age 61, why well, didn't realize he was at all, unpacked Trump's $454 million appeal bond, calling out experts framing uh, President Trump's New York civil case. Now, it's not causing harm to anyone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Daily Show host uh, showed a clip of CNN's Laura Coates interviewing Kevin O'Leary and uh, about that, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. And um, then as you go down, Stewart argued that money is not infinite, infinite and there are victims, blah, blah, blah. Stewart also contended that failing to declare a higher market value on a property while paying taxes based on a lower assessed value constitutes fraudulent behavior. So he's accusing Trump of fraud. Mm. But internet sleuths, looked into John Stewart's property history, which shows an overvaluation on his New York City penthouse by 829 cents. And the New York Post also- I mean percent, not per- eight, percent. You said cents. Oh, no, not cents. He's got no cents. He's a right. liberal. That he inflated his penthouse by eight. You know, um, when he was on MTV at the Beach House, I heard him say he was so broke that the only food he would have at those days was when he was at the beach house. He had no food at home. He was probably lying. Yeah, he probably was. And yeah. now he's got a New York City penthouse that he overvalued 829%. That's a lot. The New York Post confirmed this. In 2014, wow. John Stewart sold his 6,280-square-foot Tribeca duplex for $17.5 million. But according to tax assessor records from 2013 to 14. Obtained by the New York Post, the property had an estimated market value of only $1.8 million. Well, here's the thing. I don't think, obviously, either of them committed any kind of fraud. Remember that episode of Seinfeld where George bought that used car that he thought was owned by John Voight? Mm-hmm. And it was it was John Voight, but it wasn't the actor. And he would went around and telling everybody that it was, and, and it made George buy the car because he thought it was John Voight's car. A celebrity home is worth more to a lot of people than like my home or your home because it's owned by 
Now, I'm not a fan of John Stewart, but a realtor might say, oh, this is John Stewart's house. Yeah. And That's somebody exactly who's a potential right. buyer might be like, oh, you know, then you, know, you might have a lot more bids and be able to get away with that. Is that fraud? No. You know, listen, you can, um, you can sell. I mean, that's what Trump did. Excuse me. You can sell your home for whatever you want to sell it for. If somebody's willing to buy it. If someone's willing to buy it. And uh, so. If you're a celebrity, I would think your, your, anything you own is going to have a higher valuation than a normal person. Yeah. If, if Donald Trump owned the house next door to us and it was completely identical to our house, that house would be worth. A lot more money than ours because Donald Trump owned it, even if he never visited it. Just the fact that he owned it and his name would be on the deed or something would make it valuable. But if he actually lived in it and used the toilet, it'd be worth – It's the uh, same principle with priceless. art, with paintings and, and things like that. Certain artists uh, like um, Jackson Pollock, who wasn't like a great artist. Now just spilled paint on his things. his wife was very successful in getting him into the New York art scene. And it was all about timing and hype. And, you know, he became a millionaire selling these painting drips of, of, of things and saying this was like fine art and all this stuff. It was hype. I mean, that, you know, so John Stewart can do this and sell his house for $16 million more than its yeah. market value yeah. and profit off that. But Trump can't. So it'll be interesting to see how, uh, you know, he handles this on his next show. I'm sure he'll find some well, kind of and spin, but he's obviously he'll probably a hypocrite. ignore it. And you know, the other thing is this, you know, with Trump with the bank loans, when you if we went to um like if you know, because we're like normal people. So if we went to like Chase or Bank of America and wanted to refinance our house, okay? Say we, we're not doing that, but say we wanted to do that and we go to Chase Bank or we go to Bank of America and say we want to refinance our house. Our house is worth $8 million. And then they come and evaluate it and say, no, no, it's, it's worth half a million dollars or something like that. Um, it's, up to the, it's up to the bank that gives you the loan to determine the risk right. and the value of the property. So and Your property is worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for Exactly. It. They send out appraisers. They look at it. Right. They look at what's selling in the neighborhood. They look at the property. They send an appraiser to physically see the property. And the bank decides... After all that, mm-hmm. what the property is worth and how much of a loan they'll give you for it. it, it you can go to them and say, your house is worth a billion dollars. And it, whatever the bank gives you really is kind of what it's worth because if, if there's any fraud, it's on their part if there's, it's, or, or stupidity. Right. So this whole idea that, you know, and, and, you know, here in Florida, property values are really elevated right now and not as high as they were a year ago, but they're still elevated. And, um, some of that, we get um, mailers all the time from real estate agents mm-hmm. in the neighborhood of what the houses are selling for. And people that are moving to Florida, like from California and stuff, they're paying so much more th- than the houses are worth in our neighborhood, in my opinion. It's incredible. A house, that we have a 1,200-square-foot house. Yeah. Not a big house. And it's like average for this area. And people come from California – and what they, a 1,200 square foot house, I've looked like in Los Angeles and all that area is like a million, a million point two yeah. for the same size house. Our have. house isn't anywhere near that. And they <laughs> come two. here and they see a house like ours and they're like, this is such a bargain. Yeah. Like they're so, snapping them up and, and the price is even if they paid 50 or 100,000 over the market value. It's still a bargain in their eyes. So a lot of it has to do with the buyer yeah. and the bidding and all that. That's and, how real estate you know, works. And and that yeah, exactly. And it, that's just the way it is. Something is worth the value of something, whatever it is, is what somebody is willing to pay for it. So exactly. if if a bank is willing to give you Whatever amount of money for a property, that's what it's worth according to the bank. That's like not if they're fraud. if they're selling at Sotheby's, a uh, a Rembrandt or Van Gogh or something, you know they're going to put a price value on that painting before they auction it off. They're going to say this is worth fifty million dollars. Okay, so say they found a Van Gogh. He painted like hundreds of paintings. Say somebody found one in their attic and they authenticated it. Yep, it's a Van Gogh. They found it in Amsterdam somewhere. And they valued it at 40, 50, 100 million. 
Then you get people auctioning at, you know, at an auction and you get some Saudi billionaire in Dubai who pays three or four or five times what it was evaluated at. That's not a crime. No, that's that guy's willing to pay what he, he, he outbids somebody. He, so what is Sotheby's now committing a crime because they evaluated it or maybe they evaluated higher than it auctioned off at. Maybe they exactly. evaluated a piece at 50 million and only sold for 30 million. Are they committing yeah, a crime? Exactly. Exactly. No. Now, uh, I want to welcome a new top Patreon supporter to the Patreon yes. crew, and that's Brandon F. Uh, welcome. A new, not just Patreon supporter, but top Patreon welcome supporter. Brandon. And yeah, Brandon and all of you Patreon supporters, remember, go to the Patreon page. Uh, it's you know, There's a link in the description of this and every episode. And of course... Uh, Patreon uh, members, you're supporting the program. You have access to commercial-free editions of all the podcast episodes and other exclusive content that Kathy and I uh, put up there. Kathy puts things up. I put things up. And our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank you shout-out on each and every program. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K-Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, George, and our newest top Patreon supporter, Brandon. Welcome, Brandon, and thank you to all of our Patreon supporters and top Patreon supporters and again, there's a link to our Patreon page in the episode description. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We are out of time for today. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We will 